Monte Lucretiri Range is a sort of a last gate to Rome. Uh, yes, in the sense that uh, these, uh, the upland areas of Latium are uh, the productive areas and also uh, were uh, active landscapes and full of, of activities in antiquity in the medieval past as well. Uh, so looking at the ancient settlement pattern in this area, we can recognize uh, a real life and with a real um, how say, main character. And especially in this landscape, we recognize as main characters of the play uh, the um, shepherds and that were involved in many activities apart from husbandry. So they were also involved in trade activities. And so they were communicating through the mountains and then the Tiber Valley uh, with Tivoli and Rome and were carrying products. For instance, they were carrying salt from the Ostia Saline and the, uh, and the Roman plain uh, up land, so towards the mountain, and then they were carrying snow downwards. We are doing activities here that uh, we could say are sort of uh, uh, archaeological activities in search uh, of uh, invisible people. Yes, these are the shepherds for us, the so-called invisible people, but we, if we look carefully, they are not invisible anymore. It's just that they can't not be recognized in a ceramic way, let's say, so uh, through uh, pot shirts uh, on the surface, that it's the way and the mean uh, with which we recognize uh, other periods of occupation and activities in this landscape, while the shepherds can be visible through, for instance, uh, the um, lines and the passages and the paths they were uh, transversing in order to uh, communicate with the rest of the world. So these mountains, they, they, don't, they become a very uh, lively place and also we cannot um, talk about marginal landscapes anymore but they become really lively. And this is something that we understand also talking and communicating with people now. People that have a very recent, uh, I would say, past uh, with traditional activities related to husbandry. And so for them, this landscape is quite recognizable. So whatever for us is like a lunar landscape with these limestones emerging from the uh, really, uh, thin soil uh, for them is a way to live so they can pick up a, something like this and saying and that we were praying with this when we were children or uh, whatever they find the spot saying this is the uh, devil eye or this is the eye of the virgin and they, they look at the, the simple I would say ar arrangement of the uh, rock where they, to, to which they um, assigned a meaning. The landscape archaeology is not straightforward. Mm -hmm. For instance, if we look just behind you, uh, yeah. over there is not a rock, but it's a castle. It's a castle emerging from the, uh, this uh, peculiar landscape, empty landscape nowadays. But we have to imagine a medieval past where this castle was living within a lively landscape full of activities and so also we had husbandry, we had uh, tree, um, uh, fruit trees uh, cultivation and we had Mediterranean polyculture applied. So it smelting. it's an, uh, smelting activities and also uh, grinding uh, uh, cereals where we found these uh, grinding stones that we, we have seen before. So uh, this is uh, something that we, it's not easy to recognize for us. I mean, for, uh, we have to start from a site which is standing there and it is a structural presence uh, marking the landscape, the two-day landscape, but we, have, we need to go behind it and see the uh, water writery that can uh, speak to us. It's very difficult to realize that we are only 20 kilometers from the metropolitan area with uh, four million yeah, people yes. and uh, Rome is just here but we are in uh, a place that was uh, uh, apart from the shepherd uh, abandoned 
yeah. from centuries, isn't it? To, yeah, to express. you see the real change in this landscape in the Latium Apennine uh, mountainous landscape uh, is the uh, 1950s, where you have this uh, uh, emigration process, where these landscapes were emptied in a few years. So what we see now is the result of this. And we had uh, studies also with the regional uh, park uh, of Monte Lucretili, uh, the patterns of vegetation and forest coverage. And it's quite uh, clear from uh, archive information and also from air photos from the beginning of the uh, last century that we had a, a less um, coverage by forest because uh, the landscape was in use. So there were many economic activities in the landscape, especially grazing. So the empty idea that we have now is a product of the last 60 years. A great part of your archaeological activity is in Greece. Yeah. So you can... Uh, can you compare uh, what happened in the mainland uh, in Greece, uh, in the landscape, to this part of Latium. Well, this is, uh, we are living in the Mediterranean, that's what I say also to the students all the time, and we can see it also in material, uh, um, looking at the material features. We just found the grinding stones. The green, these same grinding stones, probably from another kind of stone, uh, we could find in, the, in mainland Greece, because the, for grinding we use volcanic stone. And we are in a calcareous landscape, limestone landscape, which is quite peculiar in Greece as far as in the Apennines area. So, uh, like Brodel was saying, the, uh, the uh, Mediterranean landscape uh, goes till the, the, the mountains of the, of the Mediterranean. And it's from the mountains of the Mediterranean that uh, lives and human occupation started because, you know, um, lowlands were, ma were marshy. And it was everywhere in the Mediterranean. So, and especially in Italy and in Greece, we can see this. So mountains were the real focus of human settlement at the beginning.